Hi, I'm Vikas Sani, President of the Lown Institute. Hi, I'm Shannon Brownlee, Senior VP of the Lown Institute, and we have 10 questions we're going to answer about our upcoming Lown Annual Conference, which is going to be held this year, April 9 and 10, in Washington, D.C. Vikas, you want to ask the first question? Sure. Your conference, Breaking the Cycle of Low-Value, High-Cost Care, America's Next Health System, what does that mean? <laughs> it means that the focus of the conference, the overarching theme of the conference, is to be looking ahead towards a radically better health system. Not just tinkering with the one we have, but can we imagine a truly, truly great, truly American health system? Okay, question number two. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, what keynote speakers or speaker are you most excited about and why? If I only have one answer, then I would say Victor Montori. Victor is going to talk about the way in which these trends of corporatization and industrialization of medicine are really uh, tearing at the fabric of the relationship between clinicians in the exam room at the point of care, which is fundamentally what needs to be held sacred. And he's going to talk to us about the need for new language and the need for a new way of imagining that, even as we strive for systemic changes around payment, around process, and all the other pieces of the healthcare system. Aha. Well, I'm very excited about having a conversation with Steve Brill, who's the author of Bitter Pill, which was a best-selling book about the uh, creation of the Affordable Care Act and it starts, the new edition of it starts with a description of his own experience uh, in the healthcare system which really kind of gave him new insight into how it works and how it doesn't work. I've never attended a lounge conference. What would I be surprised by? Mm -hmm. <coughs> you want to answer that one? Well, um, I'd say you'd be surprised by the mix of doctors, nurses, patient activists, policy people. It is, I think, in that sense, uh, very different. You'd also be surprised by um, the discussion of items that often are only discussed in the hallway, never really officially or formally. And that's actually where some of the most interesting and important conversations occur. I think, I think I'd be surprised by the caliber of speakers and the caliber of attendees. Um, this is a fairly small conference, but we attract an amazing roster of people to our meetings in the past and this meeting as well. I came to last year's conference. What's new this year? <coughs> wow. What isn't new this year? <laughs> well, uh, what isn't new is we're going to continue looking at the problem of overuse unnecessary care over treatment. That's a theme that's run through our conferences for the last six years. Um, but what's new is um, the fact that we're holding it in Washington, D.C., I think, and that's going to attract a, an audience of policymakers as well as uh, clinicians and patient activists and people who are working on the inside of the system, and I think that's going to be a really important shift. The other thing that's new really is that we really are trying to start the process of almost design for the next health system. Uh, one of the sessions is going to be about the issue of single payer and really what kind of single payer and what are the flavors of single payer and I think that's an important conversation for us to have now because I think it's going to be continuing to grow as a policy option, as a topic. It's clear that the majority of Americans would support it and want that, but we have to dive in and start to understand the details if we're going to really uh, make progress on a serious policy solution. I think you're right. Medicare for All is a great slogan, and the idea of universal coverage is absolutely essential to getting to a really great system, but I think we do have to talk about some of the details, like how do we pay hospitals and physicians and straight Medicare fee-for-service is probably not the best way to go. All right. Which panels do you think will be the biggest hits this year? Ooh, I have an answer to that one. Then go for it. So we have a panel on the Orbita trial. Now this is a trial that everybody in cardiology has certainly heard of and is certainly debating uh, vociferously 
but a lot of people outside of cardiology may not have heard about it, but what it showed was that, um, that cardiac stents for a lot of patients are no better than a sham surgery. In other words, they're no better than a placebo. And I think the conversation around um, the, the clinical implications of that are important, but I also think we're bringing really interesting new information into the conversation, which is what's the impact on hospitals financially? I'd say the, the one I'm looking forward to most is um, the discussion about what kind of clinicians do we need to train in the next health system mm -hmm. and who's out there now building the next health system. And so I think the, the combined panel of bright spots that we've talked about with keynotes by Ma Brian Klepper and Chris Moriarty's, it's going to be quite uh, fun to listen to. Yes, I agree. I think it's going to be hard to choose which one of the best <laughs> is the best right. panel. Right. Okay, so I'll take the next one. Uh, is the LAM conference a good place to connect and network with others? Well, yes, <laughs> it is. It's a great place to connect and network with others. You meet people that you never expected to be interested in the same topics that you are. And I think one of the things that we can be proudest of for our past conference is the incredible network that's been built. Oh, I thought you were going to say, and that two of our past young investigators married each oh, other. Oh, that's right. <laughs> having oh, met at the Lyon That's conference. right. There is that. Yeah. Indeed. I'm not a doctor. Can I still come, and can I afford it? Well, I'm not a doctor, and I still come. <laughs> so the answer is yes. We actually encourage all of our speakers to talk to a very broad audience and not get too deep in the weeds of clinical speak. So I think we do a pretty good job of that. But can you afford it? Well, that, that's a challenge. We do have a very special rate for advocates, people who are not clinicians, who aren't coming as part of their professional life, but who are very interested and, and want to understand more about the healthcare system. I think it's a very affordable rate for two days. Uh, but, you know, that's always a challenge, and it's something we struggle with all the time. We'd love to have many more contributors giving us scholarship money so we could make it uh, more accessible for more people. But if anybody really, really, really wants to come, uh, we want to find a way yeah. to make it possible for them. You may end up staying at somebody's house in Washington, D.C., but we try to make, make it possible for you to come. Oh, mine. Okay, you promise bold talk about problems and solutions for healthcare, but is it really possible at a conference with industry sponsors? I don't know, but the answer is easy for us because we don't have any industry sponsors. So I think the speech you'll hear was as unvarnished as it should be and ought to be. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons we have to charge for our conferences. Besides large-scale policy ideas, will there be practical ideas I can bring back to my institution? I'm going to let you answer that one. Sure. Um, we have a series of workshops. Um, several of them, I think, are going to have that kind of information. One of the ones I'm looking forward to most is two distinct takes on the opioid crisis, mm -hmm. as well as what it means for practice both in terms of uh, methods uh, of treatment that are less expensive, more affordable, uh, as well as uh, pitfalls in that process that we may need to tackle. So that's one example. Uh, another is a panel on actually measuring overuse and trying to use that information at the institutional level. We're going to hear from uh, David Seltz, who's the executive director of the Massachusetts Health Policy Commission. We're going to hear from uh, the Virginia state process looking at measuring overuse, and it's going to be uh, chaired by Adam Elshock. We're going to have Jody Siegel from Hopkins, who's going to show us the tools to measure overuse. And between the measurement and the local reaction to that, at least in terms of uh, people who are leaders in health institutions, I think they'll get some really important ideas. Okay, last question. It's for you. All right. Thought leaders, important topics, affordable pricing, networking opportunities. What's the catch? <laughs> uh, you have to come to Washington during cherry blossom season, yes. which is really a hardship. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> there is no catch. Yeah. 
come. It's going to be a great meeting. I'm really excited and look forward to seeing you there. Yes.